Hello once again AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here with our third example from our video series that deals with topics 2.2 to 2.4. And we're going to be looking at a very um, interesting collection of functions um, in the next couple of videos that don't necessarily have a derivative at a very specific point. And I think innately it's really easy to understand why these derivatives don't exist but it's a little bit tougher to sometimes prove them. And so that's what I, I really want to try to work on towards the latter part of this video. So that example that I talked about looks like this in your notes. It's entitled graphs with a sharp turn. And it begins with asking you to sketch the graph and to find the derivative of f of x equal x minus two within absolute values. And you're going to compute this derivative when x is two. So the first thing that I want to take care of is the graph of the absolute value of x minus 2. And there's a variety of ways to graph this. The best way to graph it is to understand your parent functions and understand that the absolute value of x is our parent graph. That is our daddy graph. And we should know that the absolute value of x is just a V shape. And I'm going to draw something that's probably going to frustrate you because you won't be able to do this. So I'd rather you not draw this just yet because I'm going to actually erase it. But this is what the graph of absolute value of x would look like. A V-shape, vertex at the origin, a slope of 1 on one side, a slope of negative 1 on the other side. That's really important in this problem. And then when we have this minus 2 within it, we just shift that graph two units to the right. So that's what we have. Now, obviously, you can't do that really cool shifting like I did necessarily on your paper. So what you might do is if you're really confused about sketching this, you could always set up a T-chart. However, it is going to take a little bit more time to throw in numbers like, OK, if x is 0, the absolute value of uh, 0 minus 2, negative 2 would be positive 2. It would work, but it's a little tedious. If x is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. If x is 2, hopefully you see you get 0. And if x is 3, it's hopefully clear you get 1. And if x is 4, it's hopefully just as clear that you get 2. So you're going to get this V shape no matter what. I would just like you to try to get this graph taken care of as quickly as possible because we've got so many more things to do with this problem. Now what would be the value of this derivative when x is 2? Hmm, that's right here at the tip of the v. So what is the slope of the tangent line drawn there? Great question. Well, so many different ways that you can approach this. And, and once we become a little bit more intuitive with how quickly we might be able to take a derivative, I think the problem will become easier still. But one way that I want to approach this is like this. I want to remember what does an absolute value of x truly equal? What is the actual definition of the absolute value of x? And we've talked about this in class, how it becomes a piecewise function. And sometimes the absolute value of x is x. And sometimes the absolute value of x is negative x. It just depends. And what it depends upon is what sign x is already. Let's say if x were already a positive or possibly a zero, then the absolute values really don't have much of a role and they do nothing. However, if the x was already negative, we know that the absolute values will turn that value into a positive. And that's why we have to put the negative here because x is already negative this negative in front cancels that negative, and thus we have a positive number. Oftentimes in class say, hey, negative x is positive in this condition. And it sounds weird because negative x looks negative. But because x is already a negative number, we can call it positive. OK, now what does that say about our problem? Our problem was the absolute value of x minus 2. So what would his definition be? Well, basically, you just use the same definition that I wrote here in black, but you pull out every x that you see, four of them, and replace them with x minus 2. 
So the absolute value of x minus 2 is x minus 2, as long as x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. On the other hand, we might have the opposite of x minus 2. That would be the quantity x minus 2 if x minus 2 were less than 0. And as it turns out, this can be simplified just a little bit by way of solving for x in our little restrictions here. So we would have x minus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 2. And then if I want to, maybe I suggest distributing the negative, and we have negative x plus 2, and that's true when x is less than 2. Now we have to think about our derivative, which is defined as a limit. Well, again, I told you that there's certainly more than one way to do this problem. So why don't we think about using our definition of derivative? And if we recall, that definition looked a little something like this. F prime evaluated at some c is the limit as x approaches that c. And let's see, we'll go back just a couple of slides just to make sure you know what I'm looking at. It looks either something like this or perhaps we could go back even farther and use this version, the very first version that we saw. It's on the very first page of your notes for topic 2.2, 2.4. And we talked a little bit about this in our very first video. Limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c all over x minus c. Remember, if you're confused by this, all this is is simply your slope. Change of y's over change in x's, but I'm tricking the slope into thinking that it's finding the slope between two points into finding the slope at just one point. That's why I let the x approach c. That causes these two x values that are different to kind of meld into one single x value. So that's the formula that I'd like to use here in this problem. I wanted to take you back so you knew where this thing came from. <laughs> All right, now let's dive right in and see what we've got. What we have here is f prime of 2, right? We're finding the derivative, especially when x is 2. So I have my c value that's acting as a 2. The f of x is the absolute value of x minus 2. Subtract f of c. Now, f of c is just go into your f of x function, replace the c with a 2, and we have absolute value of 2 minus 2, which of course is 0. So I'm going to write that just for emphasis. And then we have this all divided by x minus 2. Now we have a very interesting limit that we have to encounter. What is the limit as x approaches 2 of the absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2? Well, it can be one of two things. That's our problem that we're faced with. Because when x approaches 2, remember it can do so from either side. So if I were to approach the 2 from the left side and decide upon this limit, it very well may be different than if I approached x, or if my x approached 2 from the right side. And this is where I think, to an extent, this definition can be a little helpful because it can show you that you do get something very different for these two expressions depending on if you plug a number in left of 2 or right of 2. But what I wanted you to get out of this is simply the fact that if we let x approach 2 from the right, then the absolute values really don't have much of a, of a, of a play here because they're going to act upon a number that's already positive, like 3 or 2.1 or even 2.001. And so the answer to that is 1. 
how that manifests in the graph. The entire graph here that I'm kind of highlighting with this squiggly line has a slope of positive one because that's what a derivative is, the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of a tangent line, or let's say the tangent line drawn to a graph that's already a line is that line itself. Now, if we move over to the other side, when x approaches two from the left, we have a situation where the absolute values are going to play a role. And if I were to use this idea, I end up with a negative number. I end up with negative one because the absolute value of x minus two is defined as negative quantity x minus two when x is less than two as we see right here. And if I try to cancel those, I can certainly do it, but I'm gonna be left with a negative. And it turns out that is the slope over here on this side. We have a slope that's now negative one. Now what this all means, I'm trying to find the limit as x approaches two but my two right-sided limits are very different from each other. So that means that the limit as x approaches two from both sides at the same time does not exist. And therefore, there is no derivative at this point. Now, as we move through the course, what we're going to find out is that if you have a graph that has a very sharp turn like this, and then we're going to have to define what does a very sharp turn look like. But if we see that, we're going to go ahead and operate under the assumption that the derivative does not exist. We'll talk more and more about what does it mean to be that very sharp turn in the days to come. Anyway, I hope this helps and I want you to stick around for the rest of the videos that pertain to these topics. We'll see you next time.